Welcome into another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We got a fun one teed up for today. I always talk about the three-legged stool of business. It's mind, body, business, right? Well, the harmonious architecture is for sure business. We got that covered. It's the 10 fundamental business disciplines every business needs to master in order to thrive and scale. It's based on our work with the Fortune 100 down to solopreneurs and everything in between. But a lot of times we miss in business the mind and body. And I have a feeling we're going to spend a lot of time there today. We're going to talk to the wild hypno lady. I can't tell you how excited I am about her name, but also this conversation. And we're going to have a lot of fun because we had a lot of fun backstage and in our pre-meeting. So if nothing else, we're going to give you a really great 20 minutes while you're listening to this episode. So let me bring on to the show real quick. Tiani, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brandon. I am so excited to reconnect with you again today. <laughs> I'm excited too. And just disclaimer on the episode, there were a couple of internet issues pre-recording. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed and try to get through this, but um, just in case. But anyway, let's dive in. The Wild Hypno Lady, how... Did you get that name? Honestly, everybody asked me that. And I wish I could have like some cool story to share. But it was just like in a dream in my sleep. One night, I just, I was trying to just really embody who I really felt I captured as not just Tiani, but more of like as the business owner, as the hypnotherapist that I am. What does that like really embody? And one night it just came to me in the middle of the night i woke up i was like oh, i'm the wild hypno lady that's it that's it and i just i've just ran with it since i love it well listen if you ever if you ever get bored of that story it's like you know when someone asks you like oh how'd you get that scar it's like opening a jar of mayonnaise no you got to add a cooler story to it so you can work on that <laughs> you're right you're right i gotta make the it woods all. when i was hypnotizing it <laughs> So we'll work on your story. You're right. I will. <laughs> Next time we'll you ask, there. I'm going to have like some cool Jedi story or something. <laughs> yeah, I love that. No. So, all right. So you said in all serious, you, you said you, uh, you specialize in hypnosis. You help people with the hypnosis, hypnosis Define for me first, what it is that exactly you do in terms of hypnosis. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really great question. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, so I use hypnosis primarily just to tap into the subconscious mind. I'm not going to be your traditional like stage hyp hypnosis or hypnotist who's going to be like, you're sleepy, you're barking like a dog. I'm not going to be doing any <laughs> cool tricks like that. <laughs> um, you know, that's, that's nice and fun and entertaining. But I typically am going to use hypnosis just to tap into your subconscious mind. So essentially, when I work with my clients, it is very similar to a regular therapy session, except for I'm able to elicit your subconscious mind and activate the subconscious mind to help us locate where the actual problem lies versus just the symptoms or what you're able to consciously make sense of. Instead, we talk to, directly to the subconscious mind and it's like, oh, <laughs> that's what the actual issue is. Holy crap. No wonder I couldn't figure it out before because I it was like hidden to the conscious mind. That's so cool. So I, I already lied in this episode. I said we were going to talk mostly about mind and body, and we probably are. But what you hit on there is is so crucial in business too. And we talk about it as, as COOs. We talk about it all the time with metrics in particular, which is the A in, uh, in Harmonious. It's analyze the root cause analysis. It is so important to not just put Band-Aids on things and say, oh, our yeah. sales are down. Let's go, let's go buy ads or whatever it may be. Like, what's the real right. root cause? So then transitioning over to the mind and hypnosis, yeah. what are like how do you get to the root cause using hypnotherapy? That's that's really interesting to me. Yeah, that's actually <laughs> and and it's really weird how it works. You know, there's a few different approaches that you can take, but essentially I I explain to people, so I'm Let's, I am a, a confidence expert. And so my niche and what I help people with is busting through confidence, specifically in the workplace and in the business, right? So specifically those self-doubts, chronic self-doubt and uh, procrastination, perfectionism, all those things that show up in when you're trying to move forward and progress in your business. 
And one of the things that I can say that when you're speaking about like root causes and hidden things that we don't realize are happening under the surface is actually that there are three main components to doubt and self-doubt and all of those things. When you're questioning yourself, there are three main components or three levels, layers, however you want to call it. And I don't think anybody ever talks about this. It's just something that I kind of discovered in my work with my clients. But the first level, and this is this just goes to talk about like the root causes that you were just saying. These are the things that get uncovered when I'm doing this subconscious work with my clients. The first level or layer is the most obvious, which is self-doubt. Doubt within yourself, confidence issues within yourself. I'm not smart enough. I'm not you know, quick enough. I'm not skinny enough. I'm not tall enough, whatever. I don't know, whatever beliefs you have about yourself as to why you're unable to be as great as you, you would like to be, right? That's pretty obvious. We That's probably the most surface level. Now, the other subconscious root issues that are showing up as well that, are, that you're usually holding on to, the second level is your, actually your lack of confidence in others, and nobody tends to talk about this. Yeah, I know. So you can be like, I'm a fucking amazing. I'm the shit. I'm so cool. Like what? I am just, I'm just out here killing it, right? You can believe all of that. And I could help you get to that point. But then the next level that shows up is your belief about others. So you might have a distrust or lack of confidence in other people. You might be like, for, for women, oftentimes it might be men, right? It's like men don't respect women. They don't think that we are valuable, A, B, and C. And so for the women that I work with, it shows up in not asking for a raise, not asserting yourself for, or applying for different opportunities because you're like, well, what would be the point of that? Even though I'm amazing, my boss would never see that. My boss doesn't believe that. And so we limit ourselves based on th those types of things, right? So <laughs> it might be anything, any authority figure. If it's not just, you know, not just for women, obviously the same stuff applies for men oh, my boss doesn't see my greatness. You know, he, he doesn't believe in me. So the same stuff. And you start to minimize your reach because you doubt that the other people around you would be able to recognize or respect or value the things that you bring to the table. So that's going to be part two. That's another subconscious level that a lot of people do not talk about. So that's number two. Number three, the third thing that usually this is like the last thing that needs to be uncovered and unlocked when you're working at the subconscious level in order to really have that full foundation of complete, unshakable, ultimate confidence within yourself. Um, it's actually the belief that you have about the world or about life. So it's a third level. Um, these are the beliefs about just life in general, such as like, you guys always hear, what do we say? Life's tough, you know, just deal with it. It's, you know, it's so hard out here. The world's going to hell in a handbasket. Oh, now there's aliens and robots taking over. I don't know. We may as well just give up, right? Like I hear these things so much. <laughs> like No, that last one time. I agree with. That one's true. Everything else can be fixed. With <laughs> aliens and robots, you know, we're, we're along for the ride. It's like, <laughs> right, right, right. So it's like what's happening is when these beliefs are showing up, no matter how how strong you are in your capabilities and your, uh, you know, greatness, it's not going to help you when you're just like, there's no point. The world's just ending anyways. There's no point. It's doomsday is on its way. It's no point in trying to start that business. There's no point in going for the, that hobby that I've always wanted to try, learning how to ride a motorcycle. There's no point in doing any of those things because it's all going to shit anyways, right? This is going to be a really limiting <laughs> belief that you might be carrying when it comes to really busting through in your business or anything like that. Um, so if you don't believe that there's a point in even trying to get the business going or economy, economy might be also, I don't know if that's others or life. I don't know which one that is, but if the economy, if in your mind, the economy is horrible and nobody's spending money right now, you're not going to, you're not going to put your services out there. You're not going to really try to push or learn how to make, how to use your marketing skills because there's no point because the economy sucks and nobody's buying anything anyway. Right. So these are going to be the three levels when you asked me about like 
what those subconscious things and roots are, it's going to show up in one of these three ways, two of these three ways, or most likely all three of those ways in your in your subconscious mind. That's really cool. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that specifically about, you know, your beliefs. But I'm also curious, too, because, OK, so you you have a three legged stool. If I could use my terms yeah. and put it on, on your language, yeah. I say mind body business. But what I what we also teach at what if is if you're lacking in any one area, it'll spill over. So you can have a great business, great mindset, but you're 500 pounds. Well, right. guess what? You're probably not going to have a great business and a great mind for too long because you're you're lacking in one area. That's why all three have to be optimized. So I'm curious for you. Let's say you have someone, I, I come to you and I'm like, I'm the shit. My people are the shit. I love everybody in the world. But the world, no, like out there, no, the economy's garbage. There are aliens and robots. I've seen the matrix. I know where this is going. I'm out. How, how soon before that spills over, starts to spill over into the other two areas and then you see doubt everywhere. Does that happen? It usually happens and you're not even realizing that it's already mm. spilled over. Most of the time I can see that. I see it oftentimes like you don't even notice that it's happening, but it definitely is. And it's affecting you. Typically, it's going to show up just as like stress. You won't know what you're specifically stressed out about. That's usually how it shows up. Honestly, you'll feel this level of like anxiety and stress that just kind of just never go away. Like you're just got this like tense feeling and it does spill over into the different areas. Like you said, I don't know how soon, because usually by the time people get to me, I can already see it. Like I'm like, it's already there, man. It's already showing up in the different parts of your life. And you can't tell, but I can hear it in the language that you're using. I can hear the way that you're speaking about things. I can tell that it's already showing up. And I'm not because I don't have a full picture of how you live your life day to day. I'm not sure 100% how it's affecting everything. But I'm, I can tell that already just in most conversations with people I talk to, that it is definitely spilling over already. That's really wild. I can tell you for me, I have seen the matrix. I, I may have some belief issues in the, in the external world. So those those we may need to address, but okay, for, for the rest right. of us, for those of us listening uh, and watching, first of all, thank you for listening and watching out there. We love you. Subscribe, comment. We want to know your thoughts on this episode. Um, but I think the first problem is awareness, awareness of, of any problem. But in this one in particular, you, you even said it. We don't know that we have an issue. We don't know that we're behaving in this way or believing certain things this way. How do we first come to recognize this and then seek your services out? Because I feel like a lot of people just go through life with this operating system. It's a default operating system, right? And they don't even know to seek help. So yeah. how do you like disrupt people and, and help them get out of that rut? Ah, shoot. It's cutting in and out. Let's see. Oh, I did we lose you there? Or am I back? I'm, you're back. How much of that did you, uh, did you miss? <laughs> I think I heard the entire question. It just chopped up a little bit. So I think I'm good. Um, hopefully <laughs> everybody else what heard the question <laughs> and it didn't chop up. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Let me make sure I recap what I understood or what I did catch. That way mm -hmm. you um, you can clarify anything if in case it did get lost. Yeah. So my my understanding of your question is if it is so embedded in us and so subtle that we don't even recognize that we're carrying these beliefs necessarily. How do we come to about to being like, I need to seek some, some help. I need to get some support in these areas. Is that the general understanding of the question? Yeah. It's the, it's the coming to awareness for someone who's maybe blind to the issue. Okay. So typically the like those root causes that I just explained to you are not the reason why somebody's going to come to me. They're not going to say to me like, oh, I have issues with others and, and my view on life. That's never how anybody shows up to me. Right. What they do is they come to me because they are facing a lot of self-doubt or they are procrastinating and they don't know why. Like I set these goals in place by Q1, Q3, Q whatever, you know, I'm going, I want to have A, B, and C. That's what I set up for myself last year. And I missed every single mark. I, I 
decided I was going to do a launch and I didn't. I said that I was going to get this degree or go to school or whatever, you know, certification program. I keep doing these things. And then I usually it will show up as procrastination. But sometimes it will show up as I did the thing and it's it still feels like I don't belong there. So usually my folks will show up in one of those two ways. It's like, I keep not doing what I say I want to do, even though I know how important it is for me. It would help my family tremendously if I stepped into this space and like really expanded myself and my business in this way. But I keep not doing it no matter how much I know how good it is for me. Or it's like, I went for the thing. I'm doing the thing. I'm talking. I'm doing speeches. I'm at the networking events. I'm, I'm, you know applying for different roles at my job. And yet I really feel like one day they're going to realize I don't know anything. I I just feel like I'm way less qualified than everybody in the room, no matter how many qualifications I get, no matter how long I've been doing this stuff. And so it shows up like that for most of my people. It's like this chronic self-doubt and questioning, comparing yourself, perfectionism, which is stopping you from taking any action. Those are usually going to be the reasons why people come to me. In that, we do unearth those three levels and layers that I was just talking about. Yeah, that that's awesome. I think, like like the question was was geared at. I mean, it's so important to under uncover the awareness first of all, come to the awareness that you have an issue, and then recognize those symptoms, and then seek help. Of course. So I've asked way too many questions in this episode because I'm excited and we're having a good time. You have a special offer, and then you also have action steps to unlock your you-ness, and I want to get to those things. But first, tell me about the the special offer that you have on your website. I'm going to put that on the screen, and then we'll tie this episode together. For sure. Thanks so much, Brandon. Um, So yeah, if you go to my website, wildhypnolady.com, you'll be able to get your very own unshakable confidence hypnosis audio. So this is going to be something that will help you to rewire some of those beliefs that are pretty unhelpful for you at the subconscious level, right? So it's a little bit deeper than meditation or like affirmations because we're we're talking to the subconscious mind here. It's gonna be super powerful. So there's a free copy on, uh, if you go to my website, wildhypnolady.com, you can also book your free consultation with me as well. If you'd like to talk more about what specifically is keeping you stuck and where you're at and how I might be able to help you move past that in like the quickest way possible. So (laughs) that is going to be all at my website. Thank you so much for uh, reminding me to drop that in there. And thanks for putting that up. Um, Now in terms of these steps, so (laughs) there are some actionable steps that you can take to start really busting through your confidence like today. And these things are going to be at the conscious level. So what I'm about to share is not like hypnosis stuff, because obviously everybody doesn't have access to hypnosis today right now. Um, But there's stuff that you can do. If you're facing, for instance, uh, that self-doubt and not being able to recognize your accomplishments, you can start journaling. Um, I have this journal that I've created. It's five, it's like in five-year increments. I journaled literally from zero to my current age in five-year increments about all the things, all the cool stuff that I've done. Like every cool thing, the little origami pieces that I learned in third grade, like I included everything <laughs> inside of this, inside this journal. Cause I wanted to remind myself how freaking cool I was. I'm dope, man. And it's such a powerful thing because we over, we tend to forget who, who we are and our, some of our talents. So journal your whole entire life, every single accomplishment ever. <laughs> it's the first thing I, w- I would say to helping you recognize just how badass you are. Um, number two if you're facing that anxiety, that perfectionism, that procrastination that I was talking about, what I really want you to do is there's two things you can do. You can think about your role model, who you, a mentor, or a role model, somebody you really adore. Think about them. And instead of thinking about the like, oh, I want to be like Deepak Chopra right now. Don't think about Deepak Chopra today. (laughs) Think about Deepak Chopra when he first started and never, ever spoken to anybody about anything mindfulness, right? Like think about when he was taking his, helping his first people and how clumsy and weird he might have been and awkward and not polished as he is now. And step into that. Just be like, oh, I can still do that and become 
just like how Deepak Chopra is today, you know, or whatever. Step into where he was and then embody that. Like, <laughs> be okay with being imperfect in those areas. Um, you could also start an alter ego. That's the other thing that I was going to say. You can actually create an alter ego, like kind of like Wild Hypno Lady, right? Like that is kind of my alter ego. It helps me be like, yeah, you're that fucking wild hypno girl out there doing hypno shit. You know, like that makes me feel <laughs> really good and really confident. And so it can be whatever makes you feel really empowered. And alter ego is very helpful. So I would say that is probably the second thing. Um, that you can do in terms of perfectionism. If you're facing comparison, like comparing yourself to others, feelings of inadequacy in terms of you versus your peers or you versus your competition, quote unquote, right? What I want you to do is I actually want you to go on to Google or Yelp or whatever review site you want. I want you to look at like your favorite restaurant or your favorite store and look at all the mixed reviews. Like look at how many people are like, oh, this is the best place ever. And then look at all the people who are like, this is the shittiest. Like it's so bad. It's so horrible. I hate it here. Right. And just see that really there's no point in comparing yourself because you could be like, I want to be just like that company. And then you realize hella people hate them. Like they can't stand them. Like there's no, it doesn't matter who you're trying to compare yourself to, to or be like, there's always going to be a level of imperfection, um, a level that everybody's not going to get you. Everybody's not going to accept you. And realizing that it will help you to understand that you just being you is usually good enough because there's somebody who loves that restaurant that you hate and vice versa, hates the restaurant that you love, right? And so that just shows you that no matter no matter what you do, you're never going to be received by everybody. But there's going to be people who, there's going to be people who freaking love you. And those are the people you need to be worried about, focused on, serving and connecting with. Don't worry about anybody else and don't compare yourself to anybody else cuz nobody else has the full answer either. So, I would say that. Go to you Yelp, go to Google, go look at that stuff, make yourself feel better for a sec. <laughs> Yeah, and grab a snack, grab a drink. You're going to be there for a while because it's going to be too much fun, <laughs> what, whatever it is. Yeah, so for, for imposter syndrome and comparing to other people, my advice is just don't. I mean, that's that's basically the summary of what you said. After you, you snack yeah. on the, the reviews that you read, you'll be like, all right, this was that was dumb. And, and right. the second thing you said, the second point, which was, you know, think about people in the beginning. Uh, my little hack to that is because I'm, incredibly impatient and that is my greatest <laughs> strength and weakness all at the same time i i said to myself i was like i want to i want to start a podcast i probably won't be good at it but i want to get good at it and i want to have a lot of episodes right so i said i got it i'm gonna do it daily and i'm gonna do it with strangers on the internet and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do it live like let's do it yeah and i yeah i don't know what episode this is when it'll come out this is in the 50s or something um yeah and I, I was probably terrible the first couple episodes. Would you go back and listen to them and give me your feedback? Was I terrible? Have I improved? But I, that's the shortcut to success, right? It's just doing it and doing yes. it as often as possible with the focus on improving, of course. I mean, you don't just want to put out garbage into the world, but you everybody starts somewhere. The quicker you can get from somewhere to experience is is the shortcut to liberating that that imposter syndrome uh, in, yes. to some degree, too. So I mean, no, no, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, fail fast, fail hard, right? That's absolutely. what they say. Like, just yeah, no, go for it. The quote, what's the quote? Uh, good thing comes to those come to those who wait. Great thing comes, great great things come to those who don't. Oh, I like that. I've never heard that quote. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Fix it so I'm not stumbling over my words. But yeah, say it in your head the correct <laughs> way. Um, <laughs> Yeah, basically, if you don't wait, great things will come. Like if you go for it now, then you won't just have good. You'll have great. That's my life's motto without even knowing or hearing that quote before. I love it. Yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> so this episode was uh, way long and I don't care because I had fun and I warned you in the beginning that we were going to have fun. So thank you for sticking with us. Um, so let's let's wrap this up. Obviously, we talked about mind and body. If you can't see how that spills over into business, especially for leaders or even as an employee, imposter syndrome, self-doubt, procrastination, 
that stuff will get you fired or demoted real quick. So your, your home, which is the H and I for inspire, you can't lead people if you're not in the right headspace and the right in the right mindset to lead. And you can't be an effective team member if you're also not in the right headspace. So um, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to wildhypnolady.com for two reasons. One, it's probably the coolest website domain I'll ever go to. And two, I really want to check out the free, the free download, um, the, the short little hypnosis guide you have for us and see if I can overcome my fear of the matrix and my beliefs about the external world. I'll, I'll let you know in the description of this episode. So wherever you're watching or listening, I'll let you know if we did it. Okay. And then you can go grab your copy too. And you can, you can download that episode and go visit uh, the website. Go check out Tiani for a free consultation. On, on your results. And I can't wait for you to work with, with Tiani further. Where can we find you and follow you on social media so we can stay in the loop? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, super excited that you had me today. And yeah, you can follow me pretty much at everything at wildhypnolady.com. So facebook.com slash wildhypnolady.com, instagram.com slash wildhypnolady. <laughs> you know, like just add the wildhypnolady at the end after that slash. And that's pretty much it. Same thing for YouTube slash wildhypnolady. <laughs> all of these things, all the socials. Um, mainly my main sources, you're going to find me on Facebook and Instagram. Got a couple of YouTube videos up, not too regular there, but I've got a couple of things up there and uh, some like handful of TikToks. <laughs> That's so awesome. Well, this is quickly becoming my favorite brand ever, and I will be sure to follow along <laughs> in all the places. You do it too. And thank you for listening, watching wherever you are. Leave a comment, subscribe, like. I already told you to do all those things, but please do them. Your support means everything. And of course, your feedback is everything. I want to know. A, because I already asked you, have I improved in 50 episodes? Have these episodes gotten better? And what do you want to hear more of? Do you like this stuff? Do you want to see how business ties to mind and body and how the three-legged stool works together, how to optimize yourself and grow a better and bigger, more impactful business, especially this year? Let me know. And we'll keep bringing you those episodes and more. Got another one coming up next tomorrow. Super excited about that one. Make sure you subscribe and tune in. Thanks for listening, watching. We'll see you next time.